Dana in the Trade Facilitation, especially the Economic Competitiveness Package under the WCO Eastern and Southern Africa. This morning we are very glad to present to you uh, a program and uh, a webinar on trade facilitation and uh, how we could leverage the benefits of the authorized economic operator. This is a follow-up of a series of other webinars that we've been following as a result uh, to, in, to continue our engagement between URA and our clients. The last one having taken place on uh, export facilitation and the changes that have taken place ever since the auto conversion and how we could leverage on them. We want to welcome you profoundly. Please use our chats and uh, interact with us and uh, I will share with you the uh, the comments with the presenters that we have uh, this morning. Um, with uh, after 2005, when 2005 at the end of the WCO uh, Council Summit in Brussels, the Safe Framework of Standards was adopted, and the 2007 uh, version uh, puts a lot of emphasis on the regulations uh, that streamline uh, the working relationship between customs and the authorized economic operators. Also, authorized economic operators, AEOs, um, espoused in the WTO, World Trade Organization, Trade uh, Facilitation Agreement, Article 7, Subsection 7, where um, it, is, it is written that uh, member countries shall put provisions, special provisions that um, enhance facilitation of cargo, uh, especially with formalities and procedures of import, transit, and export. And uh, a special mention is made of authorized economic operators. This morning, I'm happy and very humbled to have uh, a world customs organization expert in tariff, but also a practitioner in uh, as far as uh, authorized economic operators. This lady has pushed the AEO with, it, with her team to uh, the highest of levels. Of course, I will remind us that she was among the people that organized the fourth uh, WCO AEO conference that hosted the entire world here in Uganda. Ladies and gentlemen, I take the honor to welcome our first presenter, who is a WCO expert and the supervisor authorized economic operator, Uganda Revenue Authority, uh, Madam Penina Kirungi. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, Penina is going to uh, uh, make her presentation and uh, tell us what she has in store, what is in her package, what are the benefits. First of all, uh, may I just give a very brief preamble on uh, AEOs, but Penina will uh, give us the full buffet of uh, what the AEO has for us, what is an AEO, and her presentation to us on what they have in stock as the authorized economic operator in Uganda. Okay, thank you, Regan. Uh, good morning, listeners. My name is Penny Nachirunji Kerere. I supervise the AEO program. I'm also a trainer for harmonized system with the WCO. Um, today we are going to talk about the AEO. I'll give insights on the uh, national perspective, regional, and, uh, and uh, global. Uh, the AO program, like Reagan has said, started in, uh, maybe we should say 2005, when the Council of uh, Commissioners of Customs sat in Brussels in 2005 to look for a way of uh, dealing with uh, the, 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 trends that were happening at that time. And um, they put in a, a document called the Safe Framework of Standards. We will give a few insights. And that ushered the AUO program. So AUO is a global program. It's also a voluntary program. Uh, traders in the supply chain will join as and, and when they feel ready to join. It calls for partnerships, it calls for 
compliance among everything, and uh, the, the, the backbone of the program is trust and ability. The clients have to have the ability to be trusted, but they must also be trusted. So I will take you through the presentation. Um, the, the traditional role of customs has uh, evolved over time. Initially, customs was meant to collect taxes and to protect uh, revenue and to protect society against the wrong elements. But uh, as years go by, we see security issues coming in. So supply chain security is key on, on the agenda. And uh, of course, uh, we were hit. The, the, the time uh, America was hit in, in uh, 2001. So we had, uh, the world had to put up uh, standards that will, will secure the supply chain. So the SAFE framework came in to address that. Now, 21st century customs requires us to balance, to facilitate trade at the same time, to check on the supply chain security. So the balance is between uh, customs being able to do what they do with the minimum resources and uh, <coughs> the international trade continuing to increase, volumes are increasing, trade trade uh, the speed of trade is also very very high people want their goods uh, yesterday not even today technology has advanced and on top of that crime terrorism is still uh, a threat to us so customs has a mandate to do all that to check on the on the supply chain and that ushers in the AO program now in 2005 like Reagan said in 2005, when the commissioners of customs sat in Brussels, they put up a standard called the Safe Framework of Standards. This has uh, a guide on how customs should work with customs. That is the first pillar of the Safe Framework. The second pillar is how customs should work with businesses that are found to be compliant. Now, that is what gives birth to the AEO program. Then later, from 2005, about 2007 to 2012, a new pillar had to come in because customs would not facilitate trade alone if other regulators uh, didn't take uh, reasonable care to facilitate. So the third pillar came in, and that's about customs and other regulators. So the SAFE has three pillars. So the AO sits in the second pillar, which calls for businesses that are found to be trusted are going to cooperate with the customs administrations, revenue administrations generally, and get benefits. So the AO program, first of all, maybe I, sh I should also emphasize, it's, it's uh, voluntary. It also gives reward to trusted traders. So the Ugandan concept AO started here in 2008 with a pilot a small team which I belonged to sat in a small room to think about how to start the program here and we were reading uh, different programs, different benefits uh, globally and then we crafted a Ugandan program. Uh, we piloted with 10 companies in 2010 and in 2013 we institutionalized the program. We rolled out with 13, the first 13 companies to come on board. Uh, the AO program is also at a regional level. So Uganda has a national program and also a regional, meaning uh, you cannot become a regional operator you, before you become a national operator. So we do two checks at national level, then you are credited as a national AO and a regional level where you become a regional operator. This means that you're going to enjoy the benefits at a regional level. Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, our friends are listening in, are giving benefits. There is a team uh, of officers in each country led by a national project manager 
who makes sure that the AUOs get the benefits that they deserve because they have, uh, they have, we have that mutual arrangement. Now, AEO in full is um, an entity, um, a government department, uh, an individual sometimes whose function is, uh, is interfaces with customs and is found to be eligible and then will be authorized by the Commission of Customs as an AEO. So it's a status accorded to a trusted trader along the supply chain. You could be an importer, you could be a customs agent, you could be a manufacturer, you're licensed by customs to, to, to work with the revenue administration. And so the status comes as a reward for your compliance. That is what AUO means in full. It's a risk-based approach because risk management must be employed in the work we do. Uh, today, about 1,000 uh, containers come through Malaba and maybe another 500 through Busia. We have goods coming from Katuna. If our customs officers, if you remember the first slide, if the customs officer is going to open every container and verify 100%, I guess we would just handle maybe two containers in a day. Yet this cargo must move. Yet people want their goods. People are servicing loans and um, they must be able to be seen to make money. So risk management is, is, is a tool that will help us categorize uh, clients who, who are low risk, low risk traders, and then we let them go seamlessly. Then where the risk is seen to be high, where clients have not yet appreciated compliance and still have to do a few uh, changes on their documents, then those will be uh, targeted. Maybe they, we will use our mechanism to, to do 100%. So AO comes as a risk management tool. It's also a system to differentiate clients. We've been serving people the same but yet you know the, the trusted trader should really not go through the same checks that the, the one not trusted is going through. Then lastly, it's a mechanism to reward compliance. Uh, Uganda Revenue Authority must uh, reward compliance because the corporate objective is to grow voluntary compliance. So if we see operators who come and, and voluntarily comply, then we must give them benefits in terms of the way we serve them, uh, simplified procedures, simplified regimes, uh, and other benefits that I, I will take you through. So who may join? Uh, the potential AEOs is the, everybody in the supply chain, from the manufacturer to the sea carrier to the freight forwarder who brings goods to the country, exporters, importers, customs brokers, warehouses that store the goods before they pay taxes, transporters, and uh, I think port operators. Now in Uganda, we haven't developed the program fully. We have developed the program for importers and exporters, and then customs agents, because those sectors work together. Then we also have of course, that also takes the bond operators because the bond operators uh, are, are keeping goods that have been imported or goods that are about to be exported. Then we have also a program for customs uh, brokers. Yeah, We are developing transporters program now. We have delayed with that because we have other regulators in transport, like the Minister of Works. Uh, UNRWA, the regulators of transport, police. So we are in consultation with, the, with that uh, team so that we develop a uniform criteria that we are going to test against the transporter. And then we will roll out the program for transporters to, to apply. Uh, I will take you through the eligibility requirements. Um, to be an AEO, you should be a player in the supply chain, like uh, I have said. You're either an importer or an agent or a bonded warehouse operator or a manufacturer. 
Then the second criteria, we look at your financial solvents. We look at the going concern. Uh, the third is uh, you must have uh, developed a compliance program. I, I, compliance program, um, which has elements to do with uh, how your company is arranged in terms of staffing, in terms of structure, in terms of uh, of um, logistical framework, in terms of crisis management. So there are several checks under compliance program that we that we look at. Then we look at the connectivity with URA systems, ETAX, ASCUDA. We, we you must connect to to the system so that we are able to com to communicate. So those are the five uh, criteria to join uh, the AU program. Uh, once you have um, you check and you you qualify for those requirements, then you can start your application process. And uh, I will say that we still work in a manual environment. So, so you start with expressing interest to the Commission of Customs by writing a letter to the commissioner and you just highlight that you want to join the program. The second uh, level is uh, preliminary consultation. Preliminary consultation could be done before you, you place your application, your expression of interest or after. So anytime you contact our office, we will be able to take you through the preliminary consultation so that you apply for a program that you already know. So you could either write and come for information or get information and then write. So the two steps go hand in hand. Now, we give you a self-assessment because in the start I said the AO program is based on trust. We don't want to sit back and do an audit and evaluate who you are before you tell us. So we give you a self-assessment form and you fill the form and return it to us. Us meaning the AUO unit, AUO unit which sits on mezzanine customs audit division. So once the application is set, sent back, we do vetting. The vetting is, is a bit a bigger scope because uh, like I said, we employ a lot of risk management. So we contact uh, our division which handles risk assessment to do a profile on a company. So the, the first step, we will get a profile from risk management. We will also gather information from domestic taxes, our sister uh, department, because we, we don't take a compliant person from the customs perspective alone. We also get, uh, you must be compliant in domestic taxes, in tax investigations, in all the URA departments. So we do desk audits to see how you've been operating in the last three years. Once we've gathered that, which is an audit, then we'll come to, to the premises to do an inspection. Now at the, at the premises, we are looking at security requirements. Remember, I said AO is about facilitation and security of the supply chain. So the checks are both uh, looking at compliance and also looking at security. So we do two checks. Now once you, you've you met the, the standard requirements, we will do a risk mapping. We sit with you to highlight the risks that we have seen that may jeopardize the status once we have let you manage your business. And uh, if the results are good, then we will, offer, we will write a report which goes through uh, the levels of uh, management until the Commission of Customs approves you as a, an authorized economic operator. If at that level you didn't go through and the risks were very uh, high, we don't forget you because you have come out to voluntarily comply with uh, URA. We put you on a compliance improvement program and work with you until you're good to start to join the program. Unless there is a, uh, information, intelligence information that we know about a company that cannot become AEO, then outrightly we don't proceed. At, at that level, when we write a report, we may not progress. We may not uh, accord you the status. Now, the current status is uh, we have 84 national companies. These figures keep changing because we have applications that are running right now. 
and maybe in two months or three we could authorize. So this is as at today. Out of the 84, 31 are also upgraded as regional operators. The region has 132. That means operators from Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, Burundi, all come to 132. But out of 30, 132, Uganda has 31. This 31 includes the WFP. We always want to say that because it's a first UN agency to become an AEO. And so we, we are proud also to partner with them. Uh, they contribute 24% in terms of volume. That's also changing because uh, our next figure, I guess, having authorized Vivo Energy as an AUO will have to be more than 24% uh, in terms of volume. CIF is 33.4 as at today. That is what they are contributing. So we, I must appreciate what the AUOs are doing. And uh, also to make comment that the 33.4 is coming in hassle free. These are trusted traders who sit and make an, an, an assessment and the tax comes through. So it's, it's great work. We hope, we really hope and trust that the 33 has to grow to about maybe regular 50, 50 or 60 yeah. percent. Yes, so that we collect a lot of money hassle free. These are some of the AEOs we are proudly associated with, and um, the list also keeps growing. That's why we left the blue line. We need to fill the page. These are the 84 that I am drawing. I should also mention that the logo up just above the URA is the AUO identifier. So it's been given as a benefit to all these companies to use it on their uh, documents, on the email, sign off, and when an officer sees that logo, they are quick to act. That's the priority treatment benefit that we talk about. Um, regional perspective, uh, the ESC AEO program was support, is supported by WCO, has been supported by, by Swedish government, has been supported by Timea, trademark East Africa and uh, the, the six uh, partners. Sudan is still under development. We have 132 operators from the five partner states, and uh, they are contributing 9% of the revenue, which is also uh, uh, good, and, and it, it will be growing, of course, as the numbers increase. Uh, the trade value is 11%, and uh, where they want to go is mutual recognition. We have an action plan with India and South Korea at the regional level. And what that means is uh, ESC as a block will benefit from the mutual recognition arrangement benefits. Meaning the trader maybe from Korea will, will enjoy the benefits Uganda is giving, Tanzania is giving, Rwanda is giving, Burundi is giving. And um, we will also get the same benefits if our exporters go to India and South Korea. So that th this is what is going to happen. The next thing is going is um, emphasis on SMEs for both national and regional. The ESC is also looking at uh, enrolling more SMEs. We are also focusing on enrolling more exporters so that they go hassle-free and, and have a lot of goods exported out of the country. Uh, the AO benefits, a few have been highlighted on the screen. We give priority to AEOs in all areas, in all areas of customs, in domestic taxes, everywhere in URA. We, we must be seen to, to give priority to the AEOs. Then expedited payment of refunds, this is from domestic taxes. I uh, would like to appreciate domestic taxes management because AEOs are given priority when it comes to claiming their refunds. Uh, flexibility in customs bond security. There is a lot of uh, flexibility. Uh, clients might not have uh, a huge bond yet. They have to move cargo maybe from the port to inland. But because they are trusted, the commissioner might give a virtual bond and goods will move. That is not given to a non-AEO because we, I mean, how will they trust that 
Kabo will actually come through. So that's a benefit, a huge benefit. And I'm sure Humphrey in the studio will comment on, on these benefits. I will also say that globally, the AO benefits, yesterday I was looking through the compendium of about 94 uh, developed pro AO programs <coughs> worldwide. But I haven't seen, everybody complains about the benefits not being that enticing. But no one has a list that we have, I will assure you, Humphrey. <laughs> so the other is uh, choice of place of control or physical verification. If you have cargo moving, say, from Malaba or from Mombasa to, to Kisoro, our customs staff will move up to your final, uh, final destination so that you don't spend more money in offloading and loading. That is a huge benefit. And uh, if we're going to measure, we will see a lot of money saved on that facility. We have attached a client relationship officer. A CRM is key to AEOs because they practically run around to make sure the AEO is served to, to the best of his uh, desire. So that's a, a huge benefit as well. Uh, automatic renewal of customs licenses the bond license and the agency license. We, we always do it annually, but AEOs have enjoyed automatic renewal every before. You, I mean, you don't have to sub, submit different sets of data. You, you're, already, uh, you're already automatically um, given. The other benefit is self-management for bonded warehouses. This is a big benefit to bonded warehouses that we have given to manage themselves. This means that they work 24 hours and seven days a week because we have withdrawn the officer who used to sit. And uh, if you remember the traditional way of customs, you, we both lock and open at the same time, but now bonds are able to manage their operations. They are open all through and they're operating, especially if they are manufacturing. They manufacture, for example, roofings, nice steel and tube are uh, working all through. I'm sure this has improved their sales. The other benefit is the team. In DPC, where Reagan sits, we have six officers who work, who work on AEOs before they work on any other. That's a huge benefit as well, because you know that either you have a query and you have to answer, and it's with the, a specific officer, and the CRM is here to also to back. There is uh, a benefit to, to have withholding tax exemption. This is in, in conjunction with domestic taxes. Domestic taxes always gives us uh, uh, the requirements needed and the AEOs or potential AEOs work through so that they are, if they have any issue, they will solve it. National Working Group, where Humphrey sits, is a forum that advocates for AEO benefits. And it's really a benefit because you have uh, space to talk to management, I should say maybe. You have a chance to interact with management and make suggestions in terms of the way we work together with the benefits. There are so many others, parking space at the URA Tower. Uh, Hafra is laughing. It looks like a small benefit, but it's huge because people move around to look for parking elsewhere, but the AEO slots have been marked for you to come through, do your work, and go. It saves a lot of time. The other is use of the AEO logo just in the corner. It also helps because your documents are separated. You're getting a distinguished service. Uh, this is how an AEO declaration looks like in the system, in a SCUDA. The entry looks different, so the officer has no time to even maybe pick a cup of tea and uh, talk to a friend. They quickly have to work while the non-AEO declarants, uh, the entry looks different. This is the distinguished service that we are talking about. The impact, we've reduced clearance time, really. Uh, Self-managed bonds have managed to save money, as reported by one of them. Transit time has improved, compliance has improved, efficiency in resource allocation, especially for URA, which has been able to get the officers from the bonds which are managing themselves and uh, deploy them where work is, is more, or where the risk is high. And of course, enhanced partnership. We have a group that we call 
our partners and, and we are really proud to, to do that. We have a few challenges, perception, the operators out there still think AEO program is uh, for multinationals. We continue to say everybody can benefit as long as you, everyone can become an AEO as long as you're compliant. So the catch word is compliance. You may be small, but you're compliant. Our strategy is to work with SMEs and women businesses this year so that we improve on, on, uh, on our compliance. We have limited buy-in from some regulators in the, in the clearance process. Of course, we work with a few, but because we have different mandates, sometimes we get challenges in facilitation. Then the culture of uh, low compliance. People are naturally uh, low compliant, and so that's a challenge for us to enroll more. The manual process that we work in, sometimes we delay because of the manual process. But we, going forward, we, we are going to automate the program. I will show you in the next slide. And of course, the fast changing environment that we're working. COVID has come in, businesses are affected. We see some are almost uh, deregistering, but we hope that there, there will be a real hope in the next year. Key achievements is mutual recognition. We have negotiated with China, and we are at the stage of signing. I explained what mutual recognition means, being able to benefit from the Chinese traders and the Chinese traders being able to benefit from here uh, in, in that uh, mode. The MRA actually comes with so many other benefits, uh, networking, exchange of information, and, and all that. India is also uh, on board. We are going to start negotiations. The other is uh, automation of the AEO process under AEO ERM. Uh, we give thanks to Trademark East Africa, which has given us a lot of money through the project uh, managing single window and all those projects. So we are going to automate the processes. This has uh, improved. This has improved the image. This has uh, improved the brand of URA. It has also uh, created growth in terms of money, efficiency, and resource. And then what uh, Reagan said, hosting the global conference is because the AO program here was mature enough. And when we expressed interest to host, we were allowed. And the benefits that came with that was really enormous in, in, in networking. Uh, Uganda came on the global map, I, I guess. We, we got to be known because of that. And it was also the first in Africa. Uh, what I haven't said is we are going to review the program and we are going to review the benefits to enhance them, especially in the five-year strategy that we have drawn, so that the benefits seem to be tangible, so that we enjoy uh, tangible benefits. The Commissioner General has emphasized uh, strategic partnerships. So if we we partner with the regulations of insurance, we could get benefits under insurance, maybe reduced premiums. We could also partner with immigration and our AUOs will get uh, maybe VIP treatment while they're traveling. Uh, we will also get, <laughs> half <laughs> is not in it. We, we, we are really strategic in terms of uh, the future. Immigration has enormous benefits to give us insurance, uh, airlines, Emirates is an AEO in Dubai, so maybe they could reduce on the freight charges for AEOs. So that's the future, really. The future is bright. And um, I will come. Any other comments and questions? I was summarizing. The program is there is a lot to talk about, but uh, because of time, we need to close here. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you so much, uh, Penina for that elaborate uh, presentation. I find uh, your presentation very rich, and I think uh, every Ugandan if, uh, who is interested in doing business uh, could spare some time and have this presentation. And I hope this will be available to, the, to the, our viewers and listeners on the social ne uh, networks. It's very important that uh, we share this slide. Uh, for the benefit of everybody. Our lines, I will remind us that our lines are open. 
please keep uh, chatting send your questions send your comments send your advice and we could improve even this uh, process better I found it very interesting that there is automatic renewal of license knowing the hassles you go through to renew the license Humphrey uh, you're enjoying these benefits and the, I didn't know uh, and you're quiet eh? but uh, it is okay I also liked your strategy for the new year one uh, on the women traders and the small scale traders which is a perception issue that it's not only for the multi lines and the bolores of this world mm -hmm. but also I like your view uh, and, uh, and your strategy for that there's a national working group that is constantly working at that level. Uh, meanwhile, I welcome the feedback from the team that is chatting. I also like, I was one of the people who was pushing so hard for the AEO identifier in the system so that we can quickly expedite someone who is compliant. Um, an authorized economic operator shouldn't take long. So I like the, the identifier. And I'm a benefactor this morning. I've just been decorated with an AEO uh, logo, so I'm identified already and I'm enjoying. And Humphrey was laughing that for him, much as this one is Ugandan, for him, his is international. It but is it is ESC at that level, and uh, we shall get there. Uh, thank you so much, Penina. That was rich, that was very resourceful. Allow me to welcome a general manager for Malt Lines International who also is the human resource manager for the entire group, uh, incorporated in 2002 and uh, having a very global uh, uh, presence in uh, Uganda, in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Rwanda, in Burundi, South Sudan, and uh, other parts of the world. Multilines has been very, very uh, pivotal and very resourceful as far as uh, um, clearing, forwarding, and the supply chain in East African community and beyond is concerned. And uh, Humphrey, um, we've related a lot and we constantly relate at different levels as far as cargo clearance, not only for his company, but for the entire supply chain in East Africa and beyond. Allow me to welcome Humphrey to come and make his presentation, them being our clients and partners. Humphrey, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Regan. Um, I appreciate the opportunity this morning. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, my name is Humphrey Asimwe, and uh, as Regan mentioned, I work with Multilines International Limited, uh, where I am general manager. Uh, Multilines International is a national and regional authorized economic operator. We are a logistics company that does clearing, forwarding, transportation, uh, freight forwarding as well, um, and uh, have been in operation for the last 18 years. Um, and we are privileged to be an AEO, like I mentioned earlier, national and regional AEO. Uh, but like uh, Penina mentioned, the process of becoming an AEO took the whole validation and audit and uh, the whole procedure that she went through that I don't want to repeat, that at the end of the day, uh, the benefits that we are reaping as AEOs is, uh, was worth it, it, makes that whole process worth it. In addition, um, because of our regional AEO status, meaning that we are recognized by um, um, customs authorities all over the East African region, uh, mean we came up with the idea as AEOs, as operators, that it would be good to come together as an association and uh, be able to do a couple of things together like advocacy, lobbying together, to be able to sit at the same table with uh, the customs authorities in the region, not just in our individual countries, as well as uh, business networking uh, and uh, uh, capacity building across the authorized economic operator players. And so we are in the process of formulating an association. I happen to be the, the uh, interim chair of that uh, committee putting together the association for authorized economic operators. Now, I'm, I must say that 
Everybody in business is looking out for the bottom line. It must make sense, the bottom line. We are in this to make money. Like they say, nobody comes uh, to work to count cars. No, we come to actually make money. So even the players in the logistics chain, whether it is a clearing agent or a transporter or a customs bonded warehouse owner or keeper or whoever it is in the logistics chain is looking for how can I make money? And traditionally, we've, there's been this notion that um, integrity does not necessarily pay. That there is a need sometimes to cut corners here and there in order to increase on the bottom line. But one of the things that the Authorized Economic Operator Program has demystified is that uh, integrity actually does pay. Because as authorized economic operators, with the benefits that Penina elaborated, some of the things that happen is that we have, we save on time, we save on money, and we save on hassles at the end of the day. If a transporter, an AO transporter, or a, for, a freight forwarder who's an AO like Multilines is moving a container from Mombasa to Kampala, and we have the faster clearance times through the borders and also through the ports and also right here in Kampala when it gets to the ICD. Or uh, apart from the faster clearance times, there is less uh, um, uh, intervention in terms of verification. If I'm moving 10 containers, I'm certain I'm not going to have all the 10 stopped and open for 100% verification because as an AEO, we are trusted. As an AEO, we have earned the right and the benefit to have uh, minimal uh, intrusive verification of our cargo. In addition to that, um, if there is actually need to verify, then would we, we are allowed to, to verify at the owner's premises or at another customs location that is more convenient at the end of the day. The savings are in terms of time, in terms of money, and in terms of hassles. And with that, it has enabled us as AEOs to do business better. And that is one of the reasons that's why we're really, really grateful for this program. And we are and, and as an association, one of the things we're pushing for is for more AEOs to join. Because the way the program works is in such a way that if the importer as well as the transporter and then the clearing agent are all AEOs, then it is presumed that that supply chain is secured and so it, it attracts maximum benefits and there is really no hassles in terms of time wasted and all these kinds of things. And at the end of the day, it does add up to uh, uh, what we are gaining as business people. So at the end of the day, I must say that as AEOs, we stand to benefit. And um, even through our association, one of the other things that we are looking out for is to be able to sit at the same table with uh, uh, the customs authorities and be able to, to discuss how we can, you know, what other benefits, for example, we can get. Um, the, 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 the picture that comes in my mind is you know, when we go to airports and uh, you go to Entebbe Airport or whichever airport, wherever, and you're flying out, you'll, you'll tend to see checking in for economy class lines up here, checking in for business class lines up here, and then checking in for first class lines up here. Usually first class, business class are usually shorter and they are hassle-free and they, 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 they go through with all kinds of cargo for you in economy. Your line is meandering all over the place and you are... And, uh, so, <laughs> it's the very same. It's the very same idea here that, as AEOs, when it gets to the supply chain, there are those who will go through the economic class line. There are those who go through the business class. But AEOs are then going through the first class line, and because of that, things are faster, things are better, things are easier, and it all comes because AEOs are trusted. Historically. Customs was looked at as an enforcement agency, primarily 
and nothing more. Every time you were to have an engagement with anybody in customs, it would be anacrimonious because you expected a fight somewhere. But I mean with our AEO program and especially with the whole rebranding of our revenue authorities over the years, right now we can I mean, sit down in our national working groups with the management of, uh, of URA or whichever customs authority within the region and say, look, these are some of the benefits that we want. These are some of the things that we want. This is how we can, uh, we can facilitate trade. Because at the end of the day, what we are looking out for is to be able to facilitate trade. And for us as business people, at the end of the day, it's the bottom line. How can I do my business faster, cheaper, and hassle-free at the end of the day? And so to be able to sit with the customs authorities and to be able to sit with other cross-border regulatory authorities like Uganda National Bureau of Standards, like National Drug Authority, like... Uh, um, uh, Minister of Agriculture, uh, Internal Affairs, whoever, and be able to discuss whatever is um, needed regarding the supply chain. At the end of the day, we benefit, and because we benefit, we, we are privileged to be part and parcel of this program. Of course, there are a number of things, and uh, I don't want to go through the, all the, the benefits that Penina mentioned. I don't want to repeat them, but um, at the end of the day, uh, there's still more. And every time we have engagements with the customs authorities, we are telling them, okay, now we want also this one. Uh, we want also the other. And we've been talking about things to do with tax clearances. We've been talking about withholding tax uh, status. We've been talking about um, um, how the, the mutual cognition arrangements between, say, the East African community and other uh, blocks in the world, whether it is like we already have South Korea on board, India coming on, China, how that can be translated into tangible benefits for us as business people. And at the end of the day, if it makes us money, then we are on the table. So, ladies and gentlemen, not to go very far, I think for us, we are, as AEO players, we are grateful, uh, we are expectant, uh, because there is a lot more that can be done. A lot of work has been done since 2008 when this was initiated here in Uganda. Incidentally, Multilines was amongst the first uh, that were piloted, amongst the first group that were piloted as AEOs and went through the compliance checks. And I can safely and vehemently state that compliance does pay. Compliance does pay. At the end of the day, because you're trusted, there are, there are less hassles and you'll cut on time. Uh, Penina mentioned in her presentation that uh, we're contributing about 33% of revenue, which is good, and we are, we, we, we are looking to increase that as we increase our membership as AEOs, and in addition to that, as we do more business, because with more business, of course, definitely comes more revenue for this country. So at the end of the day, we are looking forward. So. Um, I'll conclude by saying this, that to all the people out there, all the business people out there that are not yet authorized economic operators, I think the, the process of becoming an authorized economic operator has been shared. Express interest. Just express interest. And you know what? It is good for you to be able to express the interest, to be able to, to invite people for, to invite the customs authorities for uh, whatever audit that they need to do, because at the end of the day, you benefit. At the end of the day, you benefit by being a healthy business person, by being a trusted business person, by making money because of the, of the trust and the integrity that you have. And in addition, I should say, because of recent, we have seen this happening, where a number of tenders and bids that are coming out by a number of multinational organizations, for example, in the oil and gas sector, one of the requirements that they are putting is you must be an AEO. Because they're saying, look, if you're trusted by the customs authorities and the cross-border regulatory authorities, then we can't trust you to do business with you. So I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, this is growing bigger and more trusted, and at the end of the day, we'll all benefit. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you, Humphrey, uh, for that elaborate uh, presentation. 
you know usually when you are in a home and you say that uh, my wife cooks well and the neighbors don't attest to it that indeed we are part of the benefactors people may think you're a lying husband or a partner we want to thank you Humphrey for that for confirming that indeed what we were presenting uh, what Penna is presenting indeed there are people there are companies that are benefiting from the AEO program you actually bring it more painfully for people who are non AEOs when you use the analogy of the economy versus business class and uh, if you've been there indeed and that is the whole essence we are supposed to make sure that people have first grade first class treatment who are compliant just right behind him yes. the picture the picture behind right him. exactly it's the red carpet the red carpet <laughs> picture behind him the, pla the 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 poster the flag the banner is the treatment that I'm rightly advised by Penina. That's the treatment we all we look up to to give them, and uh, we encourage everybody to enroll for the uh, AEO program. Please join. Um, of, he is uh, testifying, Humphrey, that indeed integrity, compliance is painful in the initial stages, but along the way, the speed, the facilitation the non-intrusive uh, treatment, verification, is all a benefit that you can enjoy. And actually, he also makes it easier, saying that as it is even smoother when the transporter is AEO, when the bond operator is AEO, when everyone is an AEO through the chain, it becomes smoother. And uh, thank you, Humphrey, for that elaborate uh, presentation. I have so far four questions here, and one is, I. Um, I'll be sharing with, with them and they will choose Humphrey and Penina. Uh, a client is asking, could the AEO supervision team in conjunction with the AEO client's body consider seasoned individuals to be accredited as AEO persons? And uh, that one I think goes to uh, Penina. Uh, question number two is, since it's individuals who are responsible for the trust and uh, compliance, can the AEO team consider accrediting individuals as AEO persons? And uh, Penina Supervisor AEO will give us uh, her response. Do we have AEO individuals? That one is uh, hers. In the past years, AEO cert certification was normally accorded once a company has been in existence for more than three years, is it still the case? Because trust me, we have many compliant companies who would like to join and have not even operated for two years, including mine. Kindly advise. I would request that uh, you, you will share uh, with Penina you have an engagement with Penina so that we, the team under her and the team can look through you and, uh, and uh, as she answers that. If an agent is AO and importer is not, can their cargo be verified at place of choice, that is owner's premises, since agent is AO? Now this one here, both of them can respond, Penina and Humphrey because I'm sure um, there are such scenarios we've interfaced with in the clearing fraternity. So who goes first, ladies? First. So that's Benina. Thank you. <laughs> um, and thank you, Humphrey, for the presentation. It was really insightful. Um, the question isn't very clear to me, but I guess the uh, question is, uh, can AEO team and AEO clients find a mutual position to accredit people to become individuals, to become AEO persons, mm. to become AEO operators or, or validators. Okay, I will answer both. There is, uh, you could become an AEO, it's first of all, AEO is a voluntary program, like I said, and companies that are three years and above will join. Three years being, the criteria I showed has a compliance history of three years as a requirement. 
we, we couldn't look at one year to determine your compliance, or two years was also still short. Now more than three was asking for too much, so we, we thought three was a good uh, time to determine whether a, co a company is compliant in its operations or, or not. So three years, you can start the journey to become an EU. Now, for the team to accredit people as, I, I am thinking that accrediting them maybe as validators for AEO, that is possible because we can train individuals to become AEO accredit, to become AEO validators. Humphrey is one of the trained validator, meaning he can take a company through the requirements to become an AEO. So along the tax bodies, that not tax bodies, tax professionals like PwC and, uh, Pre and uh, maybe KPMG, we could also train the, stakeholder, the private sector in AEO validation and they could help bring companies on board if that is what the question required. If the question required if individuals can be AEOs, it can be. A, a, individuals can become accredited as AEOs as long as their internal systems, their companies are organized and they fit in the criteria that was highlighted because they are players in the supply chain so they are going to join the program. I hope I have answered their question but if I have not, uh, my phone, my email could be displayed later and then we have uh, more clarification made. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Penina. And uh, Humphrey? Yes, um, maybe I'll, I'll start with the third question about uh, when an agent is an AEO and the importer is not an AEO, um, can then the importer uh, accrue some of the benefits? Now, that is... Uh, <laughs> okay, from... I will take it in two dimensions from the point of view of the AEO operators. As AEO operators, because I work with multi lines, uh, we are clearing and uh, forwarding agents and uh, we are AEOs, but we have a number of clients that are not uh, AEOs. Now, because we are AEOs, we are required to do a risk assessment on our clients so that we know the clients that we are dealing with. Because of one, we need to trust the clients that we are working with. We need to be able to uh, uh, stand in for the clients that we are working with because at the end of the day, it is our accreditation at stake. It is one of those aspects I should add that we have been pushing and lobbying with the customs authorities to extend as a benefit, whether, you know, you always argued, you want to extend benefits by osmosis or by, you know, whatever it is. Um, so from that point, there is that point of view that it is not a direct, you can't get a direct benefit if you are not an AU importer working with an AU agent. However, uh, there are a number of things that you'll benefit from because this agent is trusted this agent is an agent that has integrity. This agent will be able to advise you in the right way of how to do things. And at the end of the day, there will be a trickle-down effect okay, on your business. However, the ideal situation is where the importer is also an AEO. Um, to be able to get all the benefits all through. I'll give some examples. Like... Um, uh, Penina mentioned the identifier in the uh, URA system. So when an AU agent puts uh, uh, an entry or assesses an entry and it is in the URA system, it shows on their end with, an, with a particular identifier and a particular color. But if the importer is not AU, then it will not. It will not necessarily show because... Um, there is still a bit of risk assessment that needs to happen uh, on that side. However, the agent has a relationship manager, the agent has a relationship with customs and is able to make a call here and there, to be honest with you, is able to, to, to 
make sure that at least you get as minimal intrusion as possible, as viably possible. Though, from the customer's point of view, I believe the standard is that no, it is, it is better for all the players to be AEOs in order for them to share the, the to accrue all the benefits. So yeah, that, I think that is, that's how that operates. Just to add on what uh, Humphrey has said, uh, the benefits are given according to the sector the operator is uh, or belongs to. So we don't encourage uh, delegation of benefits. If you are an importer and you're not yet an AEO, we may not. We may be limited to give, for example, guarantee. Um, security mm. or, or a waiver or a special arrangement we will give it to Humphrey the agent but it's very hard to trust uh, or to give this benefit to a person who has no relationship with you so we encourage that um, if you're an agent enroll because the program is here for you enroll and, and get all the benefits in the meantime, the benefits that are coded to you will be the ones accorded to the agent, like I went through, but we won't be able to delegate a benefit. What we ask agents or importers is to, is to categorize their clients, interest them about the AO program so that the benefits are, uh, are enjoyed by all, like Humphrey has already said. Okay, I have three questions here. Someone is asking that, uh, how long is the validation process? If I state that I want to join as an AEO, I am ready. How long does uh, the AEO team take from the time of expressing my interest to the time of me starting to benefit from the, uh, the benefits of the AEO? And also there is a question that I picked for, I think this could be for Humphrey, that um, are there, your, when you're getting a non-AEO client, uh, is your validation, uh, is your um, assessment uh, mechanisms, are they watertight? And uh, because clients say there could be cases of abuse, uh, have there been cases of abuse that you've detected in your interaction with non-AEO clients? Because it's suspecting there could be uh, clients that come on board, but with the intention of using your benefit to pass, especially with this non-intrusive verification at the verification point. I come with my access, I use you, and then afterwards. After all, you won't know what goes. Um, then the third one, I think, could be for Penina, that is uh, AEO permanent, that someone, the moment I become an AEO and I'm authorized, whether I do what, whether I become non-compliant, I will forever be an AEO. Uh, there are cases uh, or circumstances for termination of the AEO status. Ladies first. Okay, Ladies thank, you. First. thank you. <laughs> thank you, Regan. Thank you, uh, our audience. The question is uh, how long does it take to become an AEO? I took you through the authorization process, but it could take a month if the client is uh, committed to become an AEO to get the status. Uh, it could also take three months if the client is still committed, but uh, Maybe not very committed. Because we request for information in, in the validation process. We need to look at your, your company internal systems. We look at your financials for the last three years. We look at, uh, it's, it's kind of an audit. But when we work together closely, it is quicker. If we request for information and it comes through. But if we request for information and it doesn't or delays, it also delays the authorization process. So the, the time really uh, depends on how committed we are as, as the two teams who, who are going through the exercise. Uh, it's a manual environment right now. So sometimes filling the form, I, I know that that also has been a challenge. Uh, filling the self-assessment form and returning it to us so that we analyze and, and make uh, uh, some meaning out of it is also a challenge. We encourage uh, applicants to fill the self-assessment form and return to us or call us while you're filling. We are, 
We are a team of uh, six people, seven. We are available to support you, to answer, not to answer your questions, but to guide on how you should answer. And then you return the assessment for further processing. The other question was, uh, is AO permanent? AO, the legal mandate was given by Reagan at the start. It's in uh, ESCCMA. It's also in the regulation on compliance and enforcement. And it's also in revised Kyoto Convention, the SAFE. It's, it's a permanent program because its facilitation should be seen to be permanent. But the status can be abused. If the operator uh, becomes non-compliant, he will be warned. If he can't heed to the warning, he will be suspended. If he can't uh, reform during the suspension, the status is revoked. So the, uh, the process um, of revocation is, is, is also subject to appeal in regard to the ESCCMA, you could appeal. But we don't think that we can go to that extent, especially when you have a client relationship officer at your side and uh, checking on you and a strong M and E from our side. And also you, because of the trust we have in you, making reports to us and uh, communicating error and voluntary disclosure that the Commissioner General opened. But we had already discussed that under the EO program. So if that is happening, we shouldn't go to the extent of revocation. But if there is any grave uh, mistake or fraud or non-compliance, the status is revoked by the Commissioner of Customs. Thank you. OK. Um, then yes. now we switch now to Humphrey. Okay. We, we want clients want to be assured that uh, there are no people fleecing around mm -hmm. using your good uh, reputation to do their dirty work and non-compliance. Okay. So one of the systems that is checked at the point of validation where a company is being audited to join the AEO program is their systems in terms of risk management, risk identification, risk mitigation, and risk uh, management. You cannot completely remove the risk, but you can mitigate it. And so those are some of the things that are tested, and those are some of the systems that are checked and continually checked, uh, even on what are known as post-compliance audits, uh, audits that happen after the fact. So um, it is difficult, and I'm not going to say it is impossible, but it is difficult to attempt to fleece such systems. Uh, I'm not saying it is impossible. I'm not saying there are no people who have tried. Yes, there are people who have tried, but eventually, because the systems are in place to do uh, uh, um, risk assessment, even as you go on, it doesn't mean that you will turn away the client. It means that you will work with the client and enable the client to walk to the place of compliance. Uh, because remember, it is a voluntary compliance program. Um, so what happens, or what has happened is yes, when a client comes through and has consignments, and uh, because we've been in this business for a while, you do, want, you, you do get to, to figure out what is exactly going on, and you're able to assist the client to be able to get to the place of compliance so that at the end of the day, your accreditation is protected, and they, they are also protected. Because you don't want a situation where cargo has been impounded because of uh, non-compliance or whatever it is, and you're an AEO agent, and you're the one who was uh, managing the whole process. So at the end of the day, um, the systems are there to detect and mitigate those kinds of risks. So just to allay fears, no. Every client is welcome, wherever they are, in whatever form they are, come as you are. And at the end of the day, we will help you, walk with you to the place where it is a win-win for everyone. Yeah. Thank you. I have uh, quickly picked three questions, I think three or four. One is, is for both of you, because recently, I think about two days ago, uh, it became uh, very clear that Britain 
has left the European Union, the Brexit. Now, and uh, the European Union, being a model union that we look up to as the whole world, um, has, how, has it, how has Brexit affected or is likely to affect AEOs in East African community and specifically Uganda at that? And I think that one can be tackled from the side of uh, the logistics angle, where Humphrey comes from, and the side of uh, customs, where Penina is coming from. And then uh, someone is saying that in, co in uh, line with other AEOs internationally, I think they're talking about um, Europe and parts of Asia, where AEOs have been uh, successful. What is the future of the AEO? What is the future? And I know concerning the future, Humphrey on this side, in the supply chain, the people on the ground, you have a future that you desire, a desired future. What is the future? Then also this side, um, already you've given a preamble of how you're looking at small-scale traders. We are aware of the communities, the ESC, the SADAC, the uh, COMESA, and now the African continental free trade area. So what future do we see uh, or envisage? Um, there was another one. Um, yes, this one I think was for Humphrey. Because when he became an AEO, you progressed from national to regional. There's a question that what enhancements have you had to make um, with the upgrading of your AEO status? So this client believes that being an AEO, you up your game. And we are aware that there is, uh, among the provisions, the requirements is to seamless information flow, advanced information, security of cargo, and the interchange with customs. In that line, all that calls for infrastructure, if we critically look at it, and there must be uh, enhancements you've made in your business, in your operation. So this client wants to be helped. What enhancements have you made uh, that they could also uh, maybe benchmark from you? And uh, as the culture is, we start with the lady. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. The first Brexit, um, I guess if we opened up to discuss mutual recognition, we would do it individually with the European Union and, uh, and uh, with uh, the Majesty, the Revenue Services, differently. So they could have exited. Of course, I guess they are going to lose a lot of benefits because the European Union had a lot of MRAs with other countries, Canada, USA, and because you can't benefit if you're not a member of the European Union, uh, they have their reasons why, why they have to leave. But for us, if, if we have the opportunity to express interest to establish a mutual recognition, we would do it individually with the EU and, and their 30-something members and then with the UK individually. So we would still benefit, our traders would still benefit uh, from the Union and, and from uh, British uh, alone. Yeah, that's what I can say. Maybe Africa can add on, on that. Mm. Okay. Um, so uh, regarding the EU uh, Brexit issue, I will come at that question from from our experience as a freight forwarders, because as multi lines, we forward, we, we export, uh, we are carriers agents to export fish and uh, flowers and horticultural products out of Uganda to lots of destinations uh, worldwide. And some of the major destinations are actually in the EU. Um, now, the regulations uh, previously governed the entire EU region, including the UK, when the UK was in the EU. Uh, but now with Brexit, uh, the beauty about their divorce arrangement, if I can call it that, is that a number of the regulations remain the same. Okay, They don't change markedly. They remain the same. Uh, meaning that if you're moving fish, if you're moving uh, uh, flowers from Uganda to London Heathrow, it's similar requirements, similar standards as if you're moving it to Amsterdam. Okay? like it was before the, 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 the divorce, the, the Brexit. 
Um, so at the end of the day, the standards are, are similar. And because they are similar, uh, we are, are, are required to maintain a certain standard. And as long as we maintain those standards, those markets remain open to Ugandan exports. Uh, it, that is the EU and the UK. The only other thing that we are looking out for is, as time goes on, if the EU, for example, changes its standards and say the UK does not necessarily change that fast or does not uh, update them, or you can still access the, the UK market uh, while not accessing the EU market. I'll give an example. A um, couple of years ago, there was an issue with uh, horticultural products to the EU because of uh, certain things that some of our farmers here were not aware of, that they were doing wrong, and so they didn't hit the standards, and so there was a partial ban. And, uh, but later on, we worked with the farmers here and that partial ban was lifted, and so the horticultural products began flowing again, being exported to the EU. Now, if it so happens that, say, the European Union bans the importation of, say, green pepper from uh, the tropics or whatever, and then the UK does not, so that market remains open. So that is basically going forward. That there is a bit of an advantage there, that uh, they, they, they will not miss, you don't have a whole block that is uh, holding you at ransom. But the good news is at least the standards are the same, are similar, and so we can continue uh, exporting to those uh, destinations using uh, the, as long as we hit the same standards. We also have imports from those countries. We have imports from the UK. Uh, we have imports from the EU countries coming into Uganda. Uh, and uh, basically getting them out is not because of the similar standards, even after the Brexit. Uh, we're not really feeling the effect on this end. Maybe the only thing is, uh, has to do with travel, okay? Because previously a business person would get one visa and go through the whole of the EU, do their business, you're purchasing this from here, that from there, that from there, get it consolidated at this single port, say in Antwerp, and have it uh, freighted all the way to, to Uganda. Uh, but now there is a bit of restriction in travel, you have to, you know, they are, they, because of the separation, you have to get multiple visas, all those kinds of things. But at the end of the day, uh, it will not be really, really big, in my opinion, uh, because the standards have remained the same when it comes, to, even after the, the Brexit. Okay. Yeah. So, second is, uh, what e enhancements have you had to make in your business? Structural adjustments, infrastructure adjustments, manpower, etc. That somebody who is upcoming and looks forward to being like multi-lines at your level could up in their game. Okay, that, that, that's a very good question. Um, I believe it is premised on the fact that uh, the authorized economic program in East Africa has two levels. There is the national level, uh, which is Uganda, or the Kenya alone, or Tanzania, or the five countries. And then there is the regional level, which is the whole East African bloc as one. So if a company is a national AEO, it enjoys benefits at the national level from the national customs authority. You're an, you're an AEO in Uganda, a national AEO, you enjoy the benefits of uh, um, Uganda from Reve Uganda Revenue Authority. But when you are regional, you then begin to enjoy benefits from all the revenue authorities. We are a regional AEO as Multilands International, so it is easy for us to get anything resolved with Kenya Revenue Authority. Because at the end of the day, we are recognized as a regional AEO, and Kenya Revenue Authority has agreed to give us benefits. In fact, uh, I think Penina mentioned this, that our, uh, the, the regional accreditation is actually done by the East African uh, East African Community Secretariat by the Director General of Customs who sits in Arusha. And so what happens is I have an issue with a container in 
Kenya. At the end of the day, um, it's simply a phone call or uh, just letting KRA know this is being handled by an AEO, uh, a regional AEO, and they will accord benefits to that, uh, uh, to me, and at the end of the day, whatever the, whatever the issue is with the shipment, it will be fast-tracked. Uh, what that did is that it enabled us as a company to begin to think more regional than just national, okay? And uh, it, it's helpful because as the East African region, there is what is called the single customs territory. The whole East African region is considered as one single customs territory. So if I have a shipment coming into Uganda uh, from outside the East African community, by the time it reaches Mombasa, uh, I have already done the pre-clearance, I have already uh, had my people at the, at the port uh, ready for this shipment to come in, and now we are even beginning to get benefits from Kenya Ports Authority as AEOs, and so Kenya Ports Authority will assist to make sure that my shipment is prioritized and at the end of the day comes through as fast as possible. So some of the enhancements we have had to do is thinking, of course, regionally, in addition, uh, having our manpower that are on the ground in the port or in Dar es Salaam or in Mombasa, wherever they are, that look, we are, we are AEOs, we are a regional AEO, we, we enjoy regional benefits, and at the end of the day, we should not expect any delays, any hassles, or anything that will jeopardize the facilitation of trade. So, at the end of the day, that is the, the, the it's basically a body language issue to be able to have our teams on the ground uh, reaching out and making sure that we enjoy those benefits even there and not just here in Uganda but throughout the region. It also necessitated that you have people at the port or an individual at the port who will be able to help out with um, you know, pushing shipments through the port. Even if you don't have a fully-fledged office, I've seen some organizations that don't necessarily have fully-fledged offices set at the port, but because they're AOs, they have one or two staff that are best there and are enjoying these benefits, and they are able to move cargo through okay, as fast as possible instead of having to go through the whole expense of establish an office in Uganda, go establish an office in Kenya, go establish an office in Tanzania. No, you're an AEO. It is possible for you to enjoy these benefits by simply uh, having the right people there and they know where to ask for the benefit and it will be given to you because you're a regional authorized economic operator. All right. Thank you, Humphrey. That was very insightful and very uh, handy for a trader because he, he's concluded that uh, indeed you don't need a fully fledged office uh, furnished with all the amenities but he's shared one of the secrets you can have a few people there he has called it uh, body language he has called it presence at the ports and uh, places that matter i want to remind you that we are having this as our first webinar we are living in the new normal of the COVID and post-COVID period, where we cannot sit back this side and uh, not relate and engage with the clients that we serve, and that is uh, the players in the different players in the whole supply chain of international uh, trade. I remind you that we are having uh, in the house uh, Penina uh, Chirunji, who is. Uh, a WCA expert and also a supervisor of the authorized economic operator in URA and also in her tenure we shall remember that she hosted a WCO AEO conference the first of its kind on the continent of Africa and uh, also we shall remind you that we are having Humphrey Asimu who is a general manager and uh, a human resource manager for the Multilines International Group that has a presence in the entire East African region, Uganda, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, South Sudan, and Burundi. And we are very honored to have you today. Um, when we have 17 minutes to go, I start thinking of a parting shot. And the parting shot that I'm thinking about that has kept resounding here is the future. We are aware of the authorized economic operator especially in the Europe, it's working very well. 
you look at how they are T, uh, T, the, the TIR connects, how they work, how they have seamless border flow of cargo. We look forward towards that. There are also countries in uh, China, I mean China and uh, Asia, that are enjoying that. We also are aware of that seamless flow of cargo between on that axis of China and, uh, and uh, Russia. And uh, the entire Asia, there are pockets of AEO benefits being enjoyed. So we are thinking as ESC, as Uganda, as partners, the future. And I know you have the future that you desire. We're also seeing the African continental free trade area yeah. coming in full force, ETC, ETC. Starting with the lady here, Penina, the future of AEO. Where do you see AEO? Where does customs see us go? Then also after that, we'll have um, Humphrey share with us your man of ideas and your committees and quick thinking. Where do you see AEO take us or us take it? Benina. Thank you, Regan. Um, the future of AEO should be bright. Uh, the future of AEO should be basically the future of URA as, as, as uh, an administration. Because AEO has actually, if you look at the, the benefits of mutual recognition, where our traders are able to to get goods from across, maybe if, if we sign the, the MRA with China, China will accord the benefits they give their traders to our traders. And last year we were honored to go to China for the negotiation. Some of the benefits they give are even reduced premiums, are, are guarantees from the bank, are credit facilities. They, they have a credit scheme for AEOs. So I, I'm looking at a Ugandan trader who is going to benefit from a seamless uh, uh, movement of goods from China, from India, from other countries that we are going to interest the MRA discussions with. And, and um, the traders, like uh, Humphrey said, are here to make money. So that is going to really uh, give them a, a good age, a competitive age with the non-AEOs. Uh, I encourage non-AEOs to really uh, apply and become AEOs because the future is bright. Administrations are looking for people with integrity, a group to call trusted traders, a group to, to, to belong to or to, to partner with in, in the effort to collect revenue. So if you don't belong to that group, you will still be on the periphery and you will, you will miss out on the, on the benefits. Um, I, I think I should just uh, maybe encourage people, especially SMEs. SMEs should forget that AEO is, we must demystify the fact that AEO is, is for multinationals. Small com we have companies here that are local and small, including a company in Kusia for a lady called Alacha Clearing and Forwarding. We have Chikwes, it has grown from, from grace to grass from grass to grace. Mm -hmm. So we encourage SMEs, we encourage uh, women uh, companies to come and join a trusted trader because URA is not ready to, to okay, is ready to work with the trusted trader more than a non-trusted trader. And the benefits are also enticing. We are thinking through, we have a list of about 19 that we are discussing together with the management team. So the future is really bright. Thank you, Penina. Um, the future of uh, uh, clearing, forwarding, and, this, and uh, supply chain. Uh. Thank you very much, Regan. Um, the future of AEO, first and foremost, we are very, very optimistic. And apart from being optimistic, we are quite ambitious. That's one of the reasons as to why we are pulling together as an association to sit on the round table and lobby and say, you know what? Yes, there are 19 proposed benefits that are still in the pipeline. We actually need more. The truth is that in that engagement, Penna can take, if Penna would uh, tell you, in that engagement, we, we proposed over 35 benefits, 19 past this, the first sieve, but we are still pushing for more. So basically, more benefits. 
right now, if in the East African region we are responsible for 9% of revenue through customs, we are looking for a time. We are looking to a time when we can at least be responsible for 50%. And I believe our, our, our colleagues in, in customs would want 50% of the revenue they make to come hassle-free without from people that they trust, that they don't have to check and recheck and countercheck and mistrust and all those kinds of things. You want to be able to lie down and know 50% is coming through without any, any problems. So we are looking, even us as players, we want to be able to get to that place where 50% of the revenue coming through uh, the coffers to, uh, through customs are, is from uh, uh, um, authorized economic operators or trusted traders. In addition, one of the things that happened, uh, Reagan, was uh, when we had the conference here, it was a very, very good time to get to interact with players from all over the world and get to hear how things are happening. For example, in the US, this program is known as the Trusted Trader. And the way it is structured there is very interesting. It is slightly different from the way it is structured here in Uganda. But like uh, Penina mentioned, when you go to the Far East again, in, 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 in Korea, in, uh, in, in China, the way they look at it is different. I mean, an AEO has a lot of leverage. Just by being an AEO, you're able to get a bank guarantee at discounted rates. Who wouldn't want that? That is what we are looking for. We are able to get discounted premiums for insurance. That is what we are looking for. We are looking for the day when an AO does not have to put down a bond. I mean, in order to have a 50 billion bond, you have to go to an insurance company and donate to them free money. Because remember, at the end of the day, you are doing your work with compliance and integrity. You're definitely not going to have an issue. But even if there is an issue, you are going to be able to resolve it because you have a risk mitigation mechanism. So why should I throw out through the window all that money putting down a point? And these are some of the benefits of pushing through and saying, you know what? One day we know we shall get there. We shall get to that place where we save that money within our within our companies. And because we're here to make money at the end of the day, we are looking forward to the day. Because at the conference we get to meet other players, we got to meet other players from all over the world and strike some business partnerships. We're able to do some business with some of them. You're able to talk to somebody seated somewhere in Lithuania and you're able to know, all right, fine, you can represent me there since you're trusted. I can represent you here since I'm trusted. And at the end of the day, that network means everybody is richer at the end of the day. Okay? So that networking, we are looking for that day when we shall have all those benefits and more come through. The future is indeed bright. The beauty about this program is, it is a, what we would call a pioneer of sorts. Because when we started in 2008, a number of the benefits that the companies were enjoying, okay, got overtaken by events. By events. What do I mean? That there were benefits that were strictly for AEOs. As time went on, these benefits started being given to other non-AEO members. Pre-clearance, for example, okay, uh, and a number of other benefits. So at the end of the day, what that meant is that the AEO program had to keep um, innovating more benefits so that it keeps 
leaps ahead of the curve. So that is why I said it's a pioneer program. And so there are many, many more uh, um, benefits that we are looking to, to, to get. But it's not just benefits because for benefits sake, it is benefits that I can tell you for us as players translate to our bottom line. We make money, we save time, and we save on hassles. Thank you. Humphrey, that was very elaborate. I, your, your explanation opens a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion and uh, indeed I, I would like to, 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 to have a look at it as well because it gets my mind thinking, thinking and thinking very hard. We want to remind you that uh, the AEO is espoused in the same framework of standards, especially pillar number two, as Penina shared, customs to business, with the intention of securing the supply chain, our uh, we presentations today have not gone too much into depth of the framework and other um, and other guidelines in there. But it's a very broad program that, when you join, you you help us as customs and we partner to make sure that the whole supply chain cannot be attacked by unscrupulous people like the terrorists. Security of the supply chain but also smoother border-to-border border and uh, uh, clearance of cargo, but also partnership to ensure that uh, we are one and information sharing. Um, AEO program is very handy, and Uganda, we want to appreciate uh, Penina and her team. I want to appreciate this, the, the stakeholders represented by Humphrey here for cooperating well and having an amicable uh, same page, to be on the same page, uh, because this is in line as well with the customs in 21st century, where a lot of uh, quick thinking has to be done. The volumes are high, the cargo is much, the staff levels cannot be matched, but again, there is need for risk profiling. We can't work in silos as government and the traders on the other side. So it calls for such beautiful programs whose benefits uh, we are starting to see and what a day to have a discussion. Uh, today is. Our time is running quickly and uh, you'll forgive me if I haven't read your, your comments that you've been sending, but I want us to, to give a parting shot, your final remark as, you, as we conclude today's program. But I really want to say thank you for everyone that has contributed. Thank you for sending your comments, for contributing, for guiding us. Some of your questions had guidance in there and we don't take them lightly. This program has been recorded and can be retrieved whenever needed. Uh, but parting shot, Supervisor AEO, you are a, what is your parting shot today? What can we take home in our checkup? Uh, thank you very much, Regan. Uh, to the staff who are watching, uh, the departmental call is a coordinated quality service with integrity. And I call upon you to give this service special treatment. So let's serve with integrity and, and accord the benefits. Uh, of course, we've been serving and uh, we really appreciate, but let's do that extra mile. Let's be agile, let's uh, give more, give more than we can. Uh, to the clients out there, these the ones who are already AOs, we can't appreciate you enough. You're our partners, we are proud of the partnership. Uh, the non-AEOs, we encourage that you join because voluntary compliance is the future of administrations. Um, it will reduce the cost of doing business, as Humphrey has said. It improves efficiency. It gives you a brand, an image. Uh, being an AEO is a, is a huge, the most huge benefit. It's just equal to AEO. And we've seen companies market their, their businesses using Thank you.
your parting shots to colleagues. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Uh, my parting shots are going to be three parts. First, to uh, correct the AEO members already, those who are already uh, AEOs. We are working uh, night and day to crystallize the association, the regional association, the East African Community AEO Association. And uh, with that, we're definitely going to move faster and better uh, as members were going to work together, uh, lobby better, and then be able to achieve more as AEOs. And so just keep your ear to the ground when we come through to you, when you're invited for an engagement or whatever it is, we appeal for your support so that we are able to move this association forward and establish something that will stand the test of time. To business people, traders, uh, whether that are out there that are not uh, AEOs. I just want to let you know very clearly that compliance does pay. Compliance pays. At the end of the day, even you as an individual, as a business owner, when you're in your years of retirement and you're in your farm somewhere or you are, wherever you are, if you set in place, if you put in place uh, policies and systems and structures and they are compliant in your organization, you know Thank you.